some saws have major bends and kinks and divots where they've been hit against things or abused or pinched in a saw in a tree that bound and fell to the ground. The next step is always straightening and to straighten a saw first you have to find the dents. I'm going to let you be the nail in my garage and hold that saw up, point the teeth at me, I'm aware of them. Then I take two straight edges and I've got two better straight edges at home but um, these two straight edges work pretty well and what I'll do in the garage is I'll move these up and down the saw and I'm holding them between my fingers and flippering them back and forth like this. Because I know if I hit a spot where one spins really easily and the other scrapes, then I've got a bump. So far, it seems pretty straight. Now on an 80-year-old saw, there are going to be some bumps. You know, right here, look Scott, how this one, take over. <laughs> this one flips really easily and this one doesn't. So I'm thinking maybe there's, maybe there's a bend and it's not unusual for a saw to have a bend near the end. Somebody might have had a little struggle with it. So I'm looking and I'm seeing if I can see a little light between this one and the blade. Maybe I can. So I really evaluate a spot like that. I evaluate it like this to see if the saw is cupped. No. But once I find a spot like this, I'll make a finger mark or I'll get a Sharpie pen. Oh. And I try to mark that exactly at the angle it looked like it was. And some saws I deal with, I have all marked up by the time I've gone down them with the straight edges because some people just don't take good care of their saws. So, the first time I asked somebody about how to straighten a saw, boy, did I regret having asked because they said I needed a, a saw doctor's leveling bench, a, a slab of mild steel two inches thick and six feet long and a foot wide mounted on a solid wooden bench and then I needed a set of straightening hammers, cross peen hammers that cost about $250 each and then I would need to learn of course how to use this equipment and I just thought that's not going to happen for me but I did find that if I lay a piece of particle board on my cement floor and get a nice little three or four pound engineer's hammer that has not been used to hit rocks and if I hammer on those lumps and then check with a straight edge, I can usually straighten them out pretty well. Now, people who've done auto body work and metal work like to go on and on and on about how the side you hammer is stretching, so maybe you want to hammer the divot instead of hammer the bump. But when you're working on a piece of soft particle board, you can hammer the bump and it'll push it down into the particle board. Anyway, this is not the way you'd do it if you were hired to be the saw doctor at a sawmill, but it works pretty well and it's affordable and I've been able to straighten out some really, really twisted, bad, kinked, bent saws with particle board and a three pound hammer. And my little straight edges and the nail in the garage and the Sharpie pen.